Welcome to Roundhouse Roulette, a Walker, Texas Ranger podcast. Thanks for joining us as we recap and review another one of the 200 existing Walker, Texas Ranger episodes randomly selected by Roundhouse Roulette. I'm Evan Dalton, here with my brother Adam. What's it going on? And uh, our fellow son of thunder, <laughs> Mr. Bob Leahy. How are you? Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us as we watch Chuck Norris's attempt to spin off a cast for another TV show. Today, we'll be recapping and reviewing Season 5, Episode 24, Sons of Thunder. It's an episode where we meet a dynamic duo figuring out their relationship in law enforcement careers. One's a minority, and the other one knows karate. Sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> but before we pull up a chair to the table pile on the mashed potatoes, and join hands in saying thanks. Join us as we pull up a stool first at CD's Bar and Grill. Fancy meeting you guys here. Man, I've, I've missed CD's. Um, I always miss CD. I'm always thinking of him, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I feel like we haven't seen him in a while, so. Well, maybe he'll show up in this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. foreshadowing. One can <laughs> only hope, so. <laughs> Uh, what does he have on the tap list uh, today for Thanksgiving? In his honor, we've got a seasonal specialty here. Uh, and this one is for all those out there who uh, are currently enjoying or maybe just have enjoyed a sumptuous feast at the table. Uh, this is a seasonal blend called Thanksgiving Ale 2021. Oh. Now you may say, what is a brewery doing brewing a beer named after Thanksgiving? But I think it has special meaning because... This beer is brewed by the Mayflower Brewing Company, and they are in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Okay. America's, quote, hometown brewery. Wow. Oh. So you could say this brewery kind of appropriated the holiday in beer form. Exactly. <laughs> A- excellent. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, the menu states as such, Thanksgiving Ale is a full-bodied beer brewed with a rich array of barley and rye malts and aged several weeks on toasted oak. Brewed annually in autumn since 2009, Thanksgiving Ale is an inspired blend of two brewing styles, the American Strong Ale and the English Old Ale. Aged on American White Oak, this brew warms the soul with hints of caramel, vanilla, and spicy nuts. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> the flavors of Thanksgiving ale pair perfectly with the bountiful variety of foods we feast on throughout this season of harvest. Mm. Well written. I think we need to, to dig into this cornucopia of taste. Oh, you went there. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like Thanksgiving, actually. Okay. Oh, I dig. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm celebrating already. I don't get the spicy nuts, but I definitely get the caramel and vanilla. It's very good. Yeah, well, this will definitely be good to savor as we dig into a very savory episode of Walker, Texas Ranger this week. We must give thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Before we uh, move on here, um, this last week, I actually heard from an actor who was on Walker, Texas Ranger. And at first I was like... Oh, this is crazy. They're reaching out to us. You know what I mean? But uh, apparently they were forwarded one of our early podcasts and didn't really appreciate the way we spoke about them, which was kind of a bummer because we, you know, this podcast should be fun for everybody. Yeah. I think, um, you know, if there's one thing that was pointed out, it's just that we clearly have no clue how the TV industry works whatsoever. <laughs> I think we made that very clear. <laughs> i mean we're learning through this podcast but you know our growing pains shouldn't be somebody else's despair and uh we essentially went back and and rolled the tape on our early episode and we were really just talking out of our butts and it wasn't even funny and uh we just want to say that we're we're sorry for that yeah our intention is definitely not to uh offend anybody except for ourselves i guess so moving on here legends of awesome on Instagram is an amazing account and they curate Walker, Texas Ranger, like TV promos and bumpers, just like the coming up on Walker later tonight. They even have a YouTube channel of all this stuff. Uh, some with the old theme song and everything, but just this week they posted up this video 
I'm going to play this trailer for the episode we're about to watch here. They've got it together. Let's just say that. Hold on. Be on the ground. And strap yourself in. When Chuck Norris takes on an explosive case and takes in a new ally. But is this town big enough for the both of them? How's the shoulder? <laughs> Better. <laughs> a thrilling world premiere movie. Sons of Thunder. CBS May 4th. Okay, so it says a thrilling world premiere movie. <laughs> so we are doing this split up as two episodes because that's how syndication did it. But when they originally premiered this, they did it as one, it looks like. Yeah, that explains why like IMDb listed as just one episode. But this trailer is pretty epic, is it not? It's a great teaser, yeah. It's got some of the greatest hits from this episode we just watched and i mean there looks like a there's gonna be a button press that activates a bomb (laughs) there's the zoom shot i mean there's more sparring between a couple characters so shout out to uh, legends of awesome thank you for just representing walker in all his glory on instagram and youtube that kind of looked like it was recorded on a vhs tape did it not oh for sure yeah i mean how else would you capture that stuff yeah um, and uh, speaking of VHS tapes, uh, as we talked about in the last podcast, uh, Bob had messaged out to to, uh, to somebody who had a, a listing of a six-hour blank VHS cassette tape, vintage, um, that someone recorded Chuck Norris's Forest Warrior onto, uh, but also noted that it was reusable if you wanted to record over the Chuck Norris movie. Um, and uh, Bob, you reached out and <laughs> you asked the seller... Was this recorded in SP, LP, or EP? I'd like to know how much space is left on the tape. And uh, did you hear back? Matter of fact, I did. It uh, didn't take them too long either. Uh, they said, it looks like a majority of the tape was used for Forest Warrior, which tells me it's an SP. But then I said, the quality isn't the best either, which doesn't make sense because it's well, SP. <laughs> it's possible it was recorded and re-recorded and re-recorded oh, so many yeah. times that... Yeah, that's fantastic. So the guy selling bootleg VHS tape and it's not good quality and there isn't room to record anything else without taping over Forest Warrior. So, you know, that said, if anyone wants that, just look up seller Honey's Gifts, H-O-N-E-Y-S-G-I-F-T-S on eBay and they, they've got you covered. Yep. Uh, yep. They might even bundle shipping for you on multiple items. Well, um. <laughs> This last weekend, we just took a set break uh, at our gig, and there was this random guy in like this a cowboy roping convention jacket, like just came up to the stage, and he wasn't doing anything. He was just kind of like, are, are, you, are you looking for the bathroom? What, what are you doing over here? And so John and I just were like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, and we noticed his jacket. And John's like, oh, were you in town here for that like roping convention? I, I saw a lot of people in town for something like that this weekend. And he's like, oh, no, no, man. This is this is an old jacket. He's like, uh, I can't do that anymore. I'm, I'm too old. <laughs> so I was like, well, man, uh, have you ever broke a horse before? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 totally. You know, and I'm like, well, okay, well, because I've got a Walker, Texas Ranger podcast. And <laughs> I'm one of the episodes walker breaks you know 14 horses in one afternoon is that physically possible (laughs) i mean the answer is definitely no right (laughs) right right and he said you're lucky if you can break one in the day sometimes it it takes more than more than a day to do it now did you ask him if he ever rode santana because no man rides santana but walker did i didn't ask that because he's like oh walker takes his ranger he's like i had a song on there once and i'm like what (laughs) <laughs> he said i used to do song pitching for i don't know it was like faith hill or something like that and i was in uh, los angeles pitching her songs and for whatever reason i was in the same place they were looking for songs for walker and he got a song in an episode where walker turns the radio on and the song comes on which i know we've seen one episode like that right well we saw the one where he turns the radio on and it's the theme song for the show <laughs> yeah. yep. so maybe it happens again uh but he didn't write the song he said he but he pitched it for the show so okay right. only right. in nashville tennessee here yeah 
But anyway, yeah, for those uh, listeners who listen to our podcast on Showdown at Casa Diablo Part 1, where Walker breaks, you know, 14 horses in one afternoon, not possible, unfortunately, uh, unless you're Walker, obviously, right? Right, right, right. The legend grows. <laughs> yeah. I would like to give a shout out to uh, Karen Cook, who um, just uh, recently uh, made a little bit of a a purchase on our shop webpage. Again, to remind all of you listening, uh, through those purchases, you uh, help us uh, pay for website hosting and and all of those fun things. So uh, thank you very much for your purchase and also your message in which you write, For years, my husband and I have recorded Walker episodes. We watch for the action, spot-on depiction of our home state, and most importantly, the cheese. Nice. <laughs> You're speaking yes. our language, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> when we discovered your podcast, we were delighted. Y'all are doing the Lord's work. Keep it up. <laughs> now, Karen, first of all, I say thank you. Second of all, I say those comments are dangerous because you're encouraging us <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh your purchase of a shirtless chuck norris action figure and a sticker are also also hosting our website so so thank you very much in other news we have a uh, a new patron on our patreon page so thank you to jesse varga also helping out with web hosting and other such nonsense that we do here uh, ridiculous uh, sheet music purchases on eBay, all that stuff. All I will say is uh, thank you, Jesse, and I hope your wife doesn't find out. <laughs> we really appreciate all the support, guys. Thanks a million. All right. Well, we've got a lot to cover this week, so let's get on into it. If you're watching along at home and don't want any spoilers, hit pause and watch Season 5, Episode 24, Sons of Thunder, Part 1, and come on back to us. <laughs> Well, welcome back. Let's dig into this beast. Uh, this episode originally aired, as we just discussed, on May 4th, and it actually aired as a uh, made-for-TV movie, but the uh, version that we're watching is just the first half of that. Yeah, and this was in 1997. Yep, May 4th, 1997, and um, it opens on a, uh, a pretty vintage car chase here. Really gets the motor running off the bat here. Now, is this a Trans Am or a... You know, like Firebird or... Mm, it was like Bird, a muscle like, car, right? Yeah, but like I never know which one it is. With like a matte paint job. Uh, well, spray uh, paint. Yeah. Just oh, a, few yeah. cans of, <laughs> a few cans of like rust-colored spray paint. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was so this great. thing just comes peeling out of nowhere, <laughs> opening it up, and dude's like burning rubber in this thing. And there are two cop cars behind him chasing him, right? Yeah, we really hit the ground running in this episode. So the cop cars get close, but... You know, this thing's a, it's a muscle car. It's going fast. And he edges one of these cop cars off of the road, and this cop car slams into, like, five mailboxes. I was thinking about it. If you recall, uh, Mignon was, was saying that one of the stunt drivers, they called him Mailbox. Right. Because <laughs> all he did was hit mailboxes. <laughs> <laughs> so that must have been him. Now, if you think about it, like, you know, the stunt drivers are out there. They're on real roads. And they're driving around and, and, you know, presumably exploding and stuff in, in fields and, and things like that. But when they run off the road and hit mailboxes, the prop crew didn't put mailboxes there. They may put a trash can there, but I don't think they're putting out a giant row of mailboxes like that. So I think that dude actually hit people's real mailboxes. Right. And it's like, was the mail still in there if it was like a, like a split second decision? And then is that a federal offense if he tampered with someone's mail? Right. Mm. I mean, these are deep thoughts that um, we're just going to leave out there and we're going to move on. And I think this happened last episode. The, you know, the muscle car becomes face to face with an oncoming semi truck and swears away at the last second, right? Yeah. And then the semi buckles a little bit and caves in the game of chicken. And uh, as it, it swerves out of the way... It uh, causes the two police cars to collide, and instantaneously upon collision, one of them explodes <laughs> and flips like over itself multiple times. And I don't know if you guys noticed in the shot of it flipping off the road, but there's just like a beer bottle sitting in the grass. I oh, like, awesome. like there was like done. like a stunt double or something was just drinking the beer first, and <laughs> just flipping the car over it. It was epic. I mean, you know, we're already in 
two seconds in this episode and we've got some explosions we've got a car chase uh so this one cop car is in hot pursuit and then um the criminal peels off to the right and we see walker's truck come vaulting over from the opposite direction <laughs> mm-hmm. and he joins in the chase as well yeah he must have been in the neighborhood mm-hmm. and at the same time we see a couple of cop cars create like a makeshift barricade with their two cars um across the highway upon seeing this it's quite obvious that the car is going to crash through them immediately right they leave like just enough room between them to like <laughs> that they might be able to push the two cars away Anyways, upon seeing that, you know that it's going to get blown right through. You know, these guys pull their cars across the road and jump out and pull out their guns. And another police car pulls in to the side of the road and out jumps a young Carlos Sandoval. And we know because we've seen him in other episodes, he's one of the eventual Sons of Thunder. Oh, yeah. He's on the scene. And he's like, what do we got? And the other cops are like, guy who just pulled off a bank robbery and just got away in a, in a speeding car. And Carlos is like, let's stop him. <laughs> and they're like, well, there's a ranger in hot pursuit, so we might not get a chance. And just as they say that, they come speeding around the corner. And the tactics of the cops are to like stand their ground and shoot at this car, even though there's a law enforcement officer directly behind yeah, in hot right. pursuit. <laughs> <laughs> Their aim is good enough to not hit Walker, but it's not good enough to hit the bad guy. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. So this muscle car comes plowing at them, and they <laughs> scatter, and the muscle car goes right between the opening and the two cop cars. It makes just enough contact to make both the cop cars explode, but it doesn't <laughs> yeah, explode yeah. itself, which which leads one to believe that Police vehicles are more combustible than the average vehicle. Based on the first couple minutes of this episode, that's the conclusion I would come to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it's a dangerous job. And so the bustle car gets kind of like away and Walker kind of pulls up and stops in the flames for a second. Yeah, I was I don't sure know what, what that was all that about. about I think he just didn't want to scratch his truck getting it between the two cars. Uh, that's probably what it was. He didn't yeah. ask anyone if they're okay. He just kept going. <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did. Well, he was in pr- hot pursuit, literally. So flaming hot pursuit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he he's like, oh, I won't scratch the truck, and then continues the chase. But that kind of gives the muscle car a little head start, mm, for sure. Meanwhile, Carlos makes like a twenty point turn, and um, he joins in the chase as well. So they speed off into the distance. Then we cut to a couple of hot air balloons in a field. And some people are about to take off into the hot air balloons. And um, there are a couple kids in one hot air balloon. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. Doesn't get much more wholesome than that, right? No, not at all. Yeah, right? And one of the kids in the hot air balloon, we recognize as uh, Billy Malloy. But uh, we'll get to that later. And then uh, there's like an older gentleman who's trying to talk a woman into getting into the other hot air balloon. And he's like, come on, come on. It'll be the adventure of your life. He said, nothing's going to happen. Trust me. (laughs) (laughs) You you don't do that in the Walker episode. You know, you go the other direction when someone says that. So as soon as he coaxes this woman into getting into the hot air balloon, uh, a bank robber pulls up in (laughs) in a muscle car, pistol whips the old guy. He falls to the ground. And then he jumps into the hot air balloon, and they're off on the adventure of her life. <laughs> yeah, she's still yeah. in there. And he tells the uh, the guy who's you know flying the hot air balloon, take her up. <laughs> <laughs> As one is wont to do when you jump into a hot air balloon. Come on now. Right. So uh, they get it off the ground. The bad guy has the, the hot air balloon um, pilot at gunpoint and this woman hostage. And... Walker gets there, you know, too late to catch them, and he eyes another hot air balloon. Mm. <laughs> and we're just like, yeah, if you think you know where this is going, you do. <laughs> we have ourselves a hot air balloon chase. Oh, yeah. And the guy who's in the other hot air balloon, like, Walker jumps in the basket, and the guy's like, let's go get him. <laughs> yeah. He was ready. I know. It's like it's like anyone out there who's uh, ever piloted a hot air balloon, 
please reach out to us because I have to imagine like in the world of hot air balloons, like it's a very Zen experience. You go wherever the wind takes you, but like the opportunity for a hot air balloon pursuit is so rare that I think anyone would jump at the opportunity. And this guy was definitely in that boat. Right. He's like, the last time this happened was in the 1930s. I know. Let's do this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, they take off. And just as they take off, um, Carlos runs along and he jumps onto the edge of the basket. As it's coming off the ground. Yeah, he has to get hauled in. And, uh, you know, there's great comedy as he gets pulled into the into the hot air balloon. We learn that he has a fear of heights. They say, oh, what's the matter? And he goes, I didn't jot down what it's called because I've never known what the fear of heights is called. Acrophobia. Yeah, he's like, what's the matter, man? And, and Carlos is like, oh, I, I've got acrophobia. And they're all like, you have a fear of heights? Who? Okay. I think anyone, and I include myself in this and that I don't really like heights, uh, if I tell anyone that, I just say, I have a fear of heights. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Heights. You, you don't have acrophobia. I've got a thesaurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you go, I've got acrophobia, they go, what is that? I mean, if anyone's going to know the term, it would be a <laughs> hot true. air balloon pilot. But Walker, as a Texas Ranger, in the Dallas area, which is quite flat, I would think that that's not something you necessarily run up against too often. Well, actually, but. you know what? I, I understand why they broke it down for Walker, because he doesn't fear anything. Well, anyways, they're in hot pursuit, and, uh, you know, as they climb into the uh, lower reaches of the atmosphere, the bank robber is just, like, firing off rounds at the other hot air balloon. Right, yeah, so he's he's higher than them, and he's hitting Walker's hot air balloon with bullets, and we see sparks fly off, like, the metal part where the flame goes into the balloon, and luckily, it didn't hit anybody. I know. They, they got really lucky. That's because whenever they saw the gun get pointed at them from, what, 400 feet away, they're like, oh, duck. Yeah, let's duck inside this wicker basket. It will protect us. Well, anyways, Walker's strategy becomes pretty evident when he tells the pilot of his hot air balloon to take it as high as possible. And they actually fly up over the other hot air balloon, <laughs> at which point Walker borrows the pilot's gloves and jumps out of the hot air balloon basket onto the other one. <laughs> and there's some awesome shots of him just going in the air. And um, this they use this in uh, some of the openings for uh, future seasons because uh, they usually do a montage of action clips for the openings. And uh, rightfully so, because this is one of the best moments ever on a Walker, Texas Ranger episode. But suffice it to say, Walker jumps from one hot air balloon to another in what is possibly, at this point in our podcast, the greatest vehicular transference we've seen yet. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. um, and I didn't realize, but I guess the like the vertical stripes on the sides of the, the hot air balloons are ropes, which I guess makes sense because that's how they keep their structure. So I guess Walker knew that. And so he used the gloves to uh, basically shimmy down the rope down the edge of the hot air balloon. And somehow the criminal was looking at the other hot air balloon but didn't look straight up and see the silhouette of Walker creeping down the edge of the hot air balloon. (laughs) Yeah, because they show a shot from the inside and you can see the shadow of a man coming down the side. Which, But, you know, who's going to think to look up in that situation? You don't expect that to happen. Shout out to Walker Stunt Double Kinney, whom we learned through our interview with Mignon, actually did this with (laughs) only a parachute on. That's insane. That's completely insane. He literally jumped, (laughs) performed this stunt. Yeah. And you can see the edits where they kind of like have Walker come back in. But finishing up the scene here. So he's, Kenny, the stunt double, is going down the rope. And obviously, it's his back, so you can't see his face. So you just assume it's Chuck Norris. And he is, like, sliding down the side of a hot air balloon. And then he slides around the bottom and kicks the guy in the face. And then um, kicks the gun out of his hand and then puts him in a sleeper hold, and he's out. And that's the episode. Um, it was it was a good one. Yeah, 10. 
Mm. We're done, yeah. right? That's it. I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. That was one of the best things that ever happened in a Walker, Texas Ranger uh, episode. One of the best openings of a Walker, Texas Ranger maybe ever, too. Yeah. So we get the opening credits and then, um, you know, back on the ground, we meet uh, the people whom Walker saved from obvious peril. And that's the uh, husband and wife, the Malloys, and um, three of their children. And Walker, of course, he's hashtag old friends with these people. He knows their son, Trent. And um, Trent is actually friends with the police officer who jumped into the basket with Walker. Carlos Sandoval from earlier, yeah. They're all like, well, you know, how's your son, Trent? And they're like, oh, he's he's off in the army and... He's doing his thing, and, and uh, you know, we haven't heard from him lately. Yeah, and the, and the older guy, who we find out is Pastor Malloy, when they ask about Trent, he kind of doesn't really answer too much. You know, he kind of has like a, he might not have the best relationship with him, is kind of his reaction. Yeah, and this is when we meet Trent for the first time, and um, it's a military base, and it says something like hand-to-hand combat training or something. And then we hear Trent's voice uh, being like, this is you know hand to hand combat training. It's going to be rough, but it could save your life one day. And then it's basically just like this shirtless dude with a bunch of guys in a circle around him, and he's supposed to be their instructor. He summons each one of them one by one to come at him, and then he just like takes them out, devastates them. Yeah, he com- <laughs> like brutalizes them. This is basically just a Jean Claude Van Damme movie. It point. really is. <laughs> yeah. And he just like, he's like, the veins in his neck are like popping out and he's like screaming. And every, you see the looks on the faces of the people in the circle around him and they're like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> and he's just like this bloodthirsty, crazy monster. And he like puts someone in the walls of Jericho and then just like starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> is that the out of this one? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so he, he's like, oh, and you show close up of his mouth. And then you're like, okay, this is crazy. And then the zoom transition zooms into his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Into yeah. the next scene. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So what happens next here? Yeah. Yeah. So the next scene is uh, the cop is pulling over a woman, right? And basically giving her the, okay, slow down next time. You know, as he's walking back to his cruiser, he confronts a man who we don't see his face, but we see his boots. What do you, what do you call it? I mean, these are by definition, steel toe boots. Yeah. They're like cowboy boots with like this, the, the metal tips. Is that what it was? Yeah. But I don't oh, know what yeah. they're, nice what they're shiny. actually called. Yeah. Black leather. And we only kind of see those in maybe like a long duster, black duster. Mm, yep. And a white Trans Am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We do see the <laughs> so car. We know yeah. that thing is blowing up later. Yeah. It's got the spray paint paint job. Yeah. So it's, it'll, it will blow up. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's been marked. I was also impressed that they blew up like three cop cars in that opening chase scene and the original car unscathed. Yeah. The muscle car. Yeah, for sure. Let's look out for it in other episodes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So anyway, the police officer, he's pulling the lady over. Hey, slow down. He turns around. We don't ever see this guy's face, but we see his boots come up and his duster. And he's like, hey, remember me? And the police officer turns around and goes, oh, yeah, I do. (laughs) (laughs) And the voice for the guy's like, do you remember me? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like really weird. (laughs) <laughs> and then the cop like puts his gun away at which point the guy who we never see pulls a gun out with like a laser sight on it and fires up the laser sight which goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's pretty sick yeah it was <laughs> and then and then he shoots the he shoots the police officer and it's like what just happened yeah we we thought Cops were impervious to harm earlier, and now they're killing cops? What? We got the shadow murdering people here? So the police officer gets shot. He falls again. We got this mystery man who's apparently killing cops. And then we have this kind of transition between the color red in the policeman's body. So it's like blood. (laughs) And that happens a few times in this episode. And we go back to the bad guy's lair for the first time, which looks like some kind of abandoned warehouse. And he gets out of his car. We still don't see him. He walks into his lair and it's kind of like hazy. And then what happens? 
Uh, he uses a giant Sharpie marker to um, <laughs> to put a giant X across a headshot of that police officer. And we see there there are other headshots up there of people we can't really quite make out. Now, I actually noticed that Carlos Sandoval's photo was one of the cops on there. For people who were just watching the episode and, you know, at the time of its release, they really weren't familiar with him. But I could recognize his hair from miles away. Good eye. <laughs> he has a great head of hair. Also, I've watched more than one Walker episode, so I know that there's a connection here. And Carlos is the only police officer in this episode. So we've got to assume he's going to be on the list. And then the heat gets turned on again with this episode, transitioning to a softball game. <laughs> there it right, is. Right, there right, right. So Pastor Malloy kind of said, well, hey, Walker, you know, we're going to hold you to that coming to see us. We've got a softball game. Yeah, after church on Sunday. Right. So they're there, but so are Alex and I believe CD's there as well, right? Yeah, it's the first time we've seen CD in, in ages. I yeah. Mean, it was good to see him. It really yeah. was. Yeah. All we had to do was see him, and I'm just glad to know he's okay. CD is there, and he is an umpire, which is perfect. So at the softball game, you know, there's this great fun being had. You know, for some reason, Walker isn't at bat, which is strange. <laughs> and this is clearly like an earlier season episode because later on he'd be at bat with the game on the line. Um, <laughs> the Malloy family's having a great time. You know, the kids are having a good time and, uh, you know, they're talking some trash and all that good stuff. And this is when we learned that um, the father in the Malloy family, his name is Thunder. <laughs> mm. This is the most Walker, Texas Ranger thing of this episode. That if they're going to have the spinoff called Sons of Thunder... That they would literally be the sons of thunder. <laughs> it's it's just like the episode Test of Faith, where the child's name who's being tested is Faith. This is like so Walker, Texas Ranger, it hurts. Yeah. So yeah, you know, Thunder, he's up to bat and um, he gets a great hit and he's being uh, chased around by a dog. And uh, it's pretty transparent that he's having some chest pain. And I was pretty disappointed that uh, no one was able to notice the signs. But uh, once the game is won, everyone's celebrating and uh, Thunder Malloy collapses to the ground. There are these awkward shots of like his face as he lies on the ground and then cut to shots of like his young, like what, seven, six year old daughter, seven year old daughter and his dog. I guess he was really tight with a dog. Dog's name is Moses. So. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hate the dog. Yeah, it was a good actor. But the music is like, if this were on a show today, the music would make it would make it incredibly obvious that something severe happened. Instead, like the music is kind of moderately uplifting as he's lying on the ground. He died doing what he loves, playing baseball with his family. Well, since the music is like uplifting, it leaves you wondering, like. Is he okay? Yeah. Is yeah. he fine? Wait a minute. I'll tell you what happened. I just pieced this together right now. His soul transferred to the dog. <laughs> there it is. That's the real spinoff. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, cut to a crime scene where um, Walker and Trevette are on the case, and it seems like there's a bit of a pattern going on where cops are dying. And so Walker's all like, well, Trevette, maybe you should run like these cops arrest records and see if there's any uh anyone in common and Trevette's like well i don't know if it's going to show anything and walker's like it's the only chance we've got we just need something for you to do exactly and then we cut back to the church which is the same church we saw in uh, soul of winter so i was like oh they're at the church maybe he's okay now or like on the mend but uh, no he's dead yeah he's gone yeah which you're like okay we just met this guy and well, he was old <laughs> he was. He was like 30 years older than his wife, but love is love. Uh, anyways, you know, she's, you know, having a moment uh, alone, she thinks, with her deceased husband. And uh, Trent walks in in his full-on uh, regalia. Yep, he actually dressed up. He just got back from beating the crap out of his whole battalion. <laughs> and he's like, oh, my dad died. Better go home. Yeah, you know, he's back and, and he's with the family. And... um they have the little funeral there. He doesn't know what to do at the funeral. And CD's there. And so is Alex and, and Walker, because, they're again, they're all old friends with the Malloys here. And um, 
Yeah, so CD runs into to Trent and says, you're going to want to stay by your mama now. She's going to need you. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Yeah, as CD piles more food onto his plate. <laughs> and, and his general comment was, that was a beautiful funeral. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a weird thing to say, but, you know. Okay. <laughs> Well, Your dad would be proud of this spread of food. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, that's the measure of one's life, you know, is the remarks made and the uh, food spread. CD should know. And, uh, you know, Trent doesn't know what to do. He runs into Pastor Roscoe Jones outside and he's like, man, I just don't know how to feel about this. And Roscoe shows him his dad's Bible. And inside the Bible is a photo of Trent in his uniform. Right. So supposedly... They had a rough relationship, but he never forgot about him so much that he marked pages in his Bible with his military picture. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, and so while we're here, Pastor Roscoe Jones is a big character in the episode Soul of Winter, but they recast him as a different actor. Now, Bob, you were saying this actor here, he's been in a pretty big movie, huh? Oh, yeah. He was Mr. McDowell in Coming to America. In Coming to America 2 as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, which uh, wasn't as good. No, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good to see him here, uh, especially after seeing uh, Lisa McDowell in the uh, Behind the Badge episode. Oh, right. Yeah. Forgot about that. So, um, again, I think we were theorizing that he might have seen the Nazi uh, script and been like, you know what? I'm good. You can cast somebody else for my part in the next episode. Um, and then uh, Trent runs into Walker at the funeral and Trent's like, you know, I just don't know what to do. I, They're looking at like karate trophies and Walker's like, <laughs> I remember that championship. And Trent's all like, well, I learned from the best, man. And they're all <laughs> right, such bros. So we're, we're just groaned because they're like, oh, right. and Walker trained him too? Of course he did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's like, man, I just feel so antsy. And Walker's like, I know how to get out those nerves. And then immediately transition <laughs> to a sweaty fight sesh in the boxing ring. With amazing music in like blue lights. It's so bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they're just like, Punching each other and, and sparring and... A lot of high kicking. It's awesome. I mean, you know, after a funeral, this is what I needed. I mean, we needed to pick the pace up here a little bit. And this is one way to do it is to show Trent and Chuck Norris shirtless. Oh, my. Yeah. And I love how it ends. Trent just gets kicked in the chest by Walker and falls back. And then he goes, oh, I feel better. Like... <laughs> <laughs> right, I just got my ass handed to me by Chuck Norris. It's like, oh, that kick to the chest really set me straight. <laughs> now I feel good. Exactly, that was a refreshing kick to the chest. <laughs> yeah, we blast back to the bad guy's lair, and he's uh, making his own bullets. And I just Googled this. Apparently, mercury in bullets is something that they claim is like the assassin's bullet or something. So, okay. yeah, they were like hollow point bullets, and then he was putting mercury and then like wax over it. It looked like it was like wax. Yeah, he was putting like mercury inside the bullets with liquid metal and then sealing it up with wax. Hmm. Okay. I didn't know if he was putting poison on it, but then I, st I stopped thinking about it because I was like, no one cares. It doesn't matter. He's making bullets. But to me, I'm, I'm sitting there wondering like, why the hell is he pouring wax on a bullet? But yeah. I was just like, oh, you know, why is he doing that? Oh, he's they're just showing him make bullets. That's all. Yeah, I mean, like, he's just a bad guy. Yeah, and he, he's they're listening. reminding us that the bad guy's out there. And that was yeah. scary enough. Yeah, and so he's listening to the police scanner trying to find his next victim. And he, he finds him. And it's just a friendly cop who's at an Italian restaurant. And he takes this dude out when he goes into the bathroom. Right, he tells his buddies, like, yeah, man, this, is, this has been a great meal. But I got to go see a guy about a horse. And he gets up, and uh, he goes to the bathroom, and we know, man, this, this is not going to be good, man. And again, this guy seems to recognize him, too. And there are these weird sort of half flashbacks to some crime scene or some scene of a crash where it seems there are a lot of cops around. It's kind of like a cop Area 51 flashback. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't yep. know what's happening, but it's becoming clearer and clearer with every flashback. So maybe in another 10 flashbacks, we'll know what's up. Hmm. So in the next scene, we see Trent, he pets the dog Moses again, and uh, then he goes to the garage, and it looks like he's about to 
dust off one of his favorite rides. And I was kind of hoping that this would be his powder blue ragtop 70s Corvette, which is pretty banging. Mm, mm, mm. Instead, it's some sort of motorcycle. As he's doing this, Adam, have you uh, recorded this song yet? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what are you talking about, Evan? I need a little more context here. Uh, there is a song that could only be described as the utmost <laughs> cheese. <laughs> yeah, it like in Walker, Texas Ranger, they hire people to write like the most literal songs to match the scene. Like, hey, we need a song that he's thinking about his dad and he's going to go visit them at his grave, but he's coming to terms with their relationship and he's going to find out that he knows he, he really loved him. And then they take that directional stuff and they put it into a song. And the song's called I Am My Father's Son. Adam, you want to sing us a couple lines? That trapped it in night Now I can't hide it It's time to show everyone I am my father's son He was there with the last one Through my rebel years As I faced my fears He's the reason that I am What I become I am my father's son Mm. Wow, it's beautiful. The smell brings a tear to my eye. We'll put the chords up for that on our website for anyone who wants to jam on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So anyways, after he jumps onto his uh, sick ride, he takes it for a little joyride down to the uh, local cemetery and has the cliche conversation at the grave, which we've seen in maybe a half a dozen Walker episodes now. He visits the grave and doesn't really say much, and that's all we get. I think that's why they probably had to have the song in there, because they're like, yeah, the scene seems a little flat. We need a little melodrama. You think you can write a song like that? Sure, we got it. But the songwriter and performer for the song is Jeff Cock, and uh, it looks like he's written a number of these gems for other Walker episodes, so uh, we can only hope that there's another one in this episode. And hopefully he has these songs on a dat tape somewhere in his basement. They deserve to be out there. We need this stuff. They really do. Um, All right. So, yeah, it's kind of a pointless scene. (laughs) But I'm glad it has the song. Uh, And we cut back to the Malloy house where they're having breakfast. And this is uh, Mrs. Malloy with uh, three of her four children. And, uh, you know, the two youngest children are wondering why God took their dad and the mother doesn't really know what to say. And Trent comes home. And that's when the second eldest, Tommy, who's like a teenager, he clearly doesn't want to deal with Trent. Like he's frustrated that Trent just came home. Because let's face it, like Trent has been away at the army all the time. And, you know, he kind of deserted the family. So why is he in their lives now? Right. So Tommy's just getting all broody. And uh, the other kids are, are hanging around. You know, this is when Trent tells his mother that uh, he's leaving the army and he's going to stay with the family from now on. He's heeding CD's words. And it's really awkward because, like, the younger kids have gone away, but they're eavesdropping. I say the younger kids, but they're his siblings and he is easily 25 years older than them. Yeah, he could be their dad. So it's just really odd. Yeah, it was kind of weird when... The mother was trying to act this scene with him, and it was like, what? She was kind of like, what is happening? (laughs) You know? Uh, She's like, oh, you're coming back. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's left the army, and um, he's going to figure things out on leave, and he's actually got a job as a mall security guard. So, uh, you know, Paul Blart, eat your heart out. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we actually get to see him on the job. And we kind of open, like, this woman's like shopping for something and she's like, Billy, Billy. And then we're like, are we watching the shining? Yeah. That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> Cause there's this kid on his big wheel in the same like striped shirt. And he's like driving on the upper level of the mall or something. And he's about to drive down an escalator on his big wheel. When Trent saves him, the mother's like, thank you so much. He does this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and before we can catch our breath, 
Apparently, there was a jewelry store that got robbed. <laughs> There's like these really awesome bad guys robbing this jewelry store. Evan, can you describe some of these bad guys? I'm l- actually looking one of these guys up because he is um, <laughs> he's in everything. Yeah, his name is Rick Prieto, and he's in a whole bunch of Chuck Norris things as a bad guy. But apparently, he was in Silent Rage. Oh, there you go. Yep. All right. So, our, our Halloween podcast, if you guys haven't checked that yep. one out. Hashtag uh, Rick Prieto. So he did stunts in Silent Rage. And uh, he's in so many things. Most importantly, he's on Walker, Texas Ranger, right? Yeah, he looks very familiar. He's one of the bank robbers. Three of them come running out of the jewelry store and go down the escalator. And Trent is in a hot pursuit. He like slides down the edge of the escalator and does like a spitting kick takes out one bad guy and then uh this other guy pulls a gun he takes that dude out with like a bunch of wrestling moves and then uh rick prieto tries to take a swing at him and he like pushes him through like a some weird glass object another guy like pulls a gun on him and he throws his police stick at the guy (laughs) that was brutal yeah it's super brutal like he just completely (laughs) destroys these people and uh you know they are quickly dispatched and the jewelry store owner comes down and he's all like, oh, thank you so much. These jewels, they're not insured yet. So like this could have taken everything from me. And then he's like, if I can offer you some career advice, you know, your talents seem pretty wasted here. Um, <laughs> right. You should be doing something more important. Whereas the guy just said that like his entire livelihood was saved by this guy's ninja moves. And he's like, you shouldn't be here. Someone less competent who would have lost these jewels should have your job. I know. I I would say, please stay here all the time. (laughs) (laughs) You need a race. Right, right. So, uh, you know, he's like basking in the glory of just uh, having like the greatest day of mall cop history. And a cop comes on the scene and it's Carlos. And he's like, what the heck happened here? He's like, who did this? And they're like, he did. And he pointed to Trent, and this one, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, these guys are old friends. And so they catch up. This is when we learn a little bit more about their backstory, which is uh, pretty dark. Real dark. Uh, did we learn this also in another episode? It's like Batman, where every time we see Batman, we see his backstory. And every time it's a little different with different actors. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just <laughs> yeah. like Batman, we see the backstory again here. And Carlos is like, man, Trent, you should be a cop. And Trent's like, you know why I can't. And Trent has this weird aversion of guns, which one might ask, why are you on the show Walker, Texas Ranger, if you're afraid of guns? Right. And even Carlos asked, he's like, but you were in the military. How did you get in the military, you know, yeah. without <laughs> without being able to use guns? And he, he says some weird line like, oh, well, since I was doing martial arts, they I didn't have to use guns. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, he should have just pointed to his two biceps. I mean, those are some serious guns. He's like, you mean these? Yeah. So, Adam, why uh, why does Trent have an aversion to guns? Well, as they show in the flashback here, apparently, when they were younger, Trent is hanging out over, I guess, one of his, his friend's house with Carlos and another kid. And the kid whose house it is, he pulls, like, I, supposedly his parents' gun out of an unlocked drawer, and they're they're handing it around, and the kid hands the gun to Trent, and the other kid goes for it, and it accidentally goes off, and we see the kid who is going for it fall back in slow motion, and we're like, wow, he accidentally shot one of his friends when he was little. That's why he doesn't like guns. Yeah, so pretty tragic backstory there, and that that's uh, an interesting excuse to make the actor... <laughs> who plays Trent, to use his martial arts skills. Yeah, only use those and not guns. Yeah. So, anyways, Carlos was like, well, how about your siblings? And this is when we learned the names of all of Trent's siblings. And uh, the Malloys named all of their kids T names. So, Trent is the firstborn. Then you have Tommy. Then you have Tandy and Tyler. And uh, Trent is all like, you know... Tandy and Tyler, they're so young, they'll probably be okay. They'll get over it. They're resilient. Right. But it's really Tommy that I'm worried about. Cut to Tommy, who's a teenager, and (laughs) he's clearly a bit of a nerd. And uh, his friend is a computer nerd and playing on his computer. 
and counting the laps that Tommy is running. I don't know if you can really call them laps. He's like running around a quarter of the gym in circles. And this is when we get treated to the second track by Jeff Cock here. And uh, presumably it's called round and round because the kid's running round and round. Yeah. Wow. And this isn't round and round. Goes around, comes around. Love will find a way. Just give it time. Right. This one goes like this. <laughs> round and round Never getting anywhere Watch the ground Feeling no one really cares Will I ever find the answer To the question spinning in my mind Where am I wasting time? Okay. Gonna pick one. <laughs> you go, boy. <laughs> that's it there. That's that's the one? Yeah, that's the one. That's the silver tuna. Beautiful. Yeah, you know, music, definitely a highlight in this one. Custom made specifically for these situations. Jeff, I gotta say Magnifique, man. You got this. The school bullies who are played by actors who are... 10 years older and five feet taller come in and they basically give them a hard time and they take his friend's computer and Tommy's like, yo man, give it back. And Tommy's cool as a cucumber, but immediately takes like eight roundhouse kicks to the face. (laughs) Yeah. It's like this kid knows karate. I was expecting him to get beat up, but not like get nailed by karate moves from this bully. (laughs) This is like the most badass bully of all time. Walker, Texas Ranger knows, does one thing and does it well. And that's basically over the top karate fights. (laughs) I wasn't expecting it in this scenario. We'd already gotten a lot of that. All right. So high schoolers are basically just roundhouse kicking each other (laughs) into oblivion. (laughs) I mean, I'm not complaining here. Yeah. And the next scene we see is, uh, you know, Tommy, uh, which I, I think honestly is, I think it's a sleeper for the best scene in this episode. Like, I think this is actually a really good scene where Tommy's trying to cover up his uh, black eye and like scars on his face from getting roundhouse kicked with his mom's makeup with the help of his like seven year old sister and eight year old brother. Right. <laughs> and, and honestly, like now that I reflect on it, best scene in the episode. Wait, 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 Get the heck out of here, man. Do, do you remember the <laughs> the beginning? The okay, hot air balloons? Okay, okay, okay. The best scene without Walker. Okay, fair, fair. Because it, it, it's like <laughs> the kids are so sincere. It's really good. I think it's quite good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And so he's like trying to cover it up and he looks ridiculous because he like a seven year old's putting on his makeup. Right. And he's like, do you think they'll notice? Yeah. He's like, you think they'll notice? And the, and the little girl's like, Oh, you look perfect. And the brother's like, yeah, you're good. And then he walks out of the room and they're both like, oh, no. He's Rolling dead. their He's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. So good. Um, so at the dinner table, the mother realizes that he's got makeup on. And uh, he's like, well, whatever. You know, I got in a fight at school. I don't want to talk about it. And he walks away. And Trent's like, it's okay. I got this. I'm going to be a role model now. And he tries to... Um, talk to his brother about it and his brother's like well, i'm not you man and then slams the door on him and trent just gives up man i can't if i could count on my hand how many times that we've had that similar thing happen growing up evan where you had said that to me well neither one of us took karate so you know it was probably happening to both of us that's true yeah. okay yeah. Yeah, let's not make this personal the only thing that's personal is this cop killer who has found another victim And uh, he's stalked this victim to the victim's home. And he basically rings the doorbell and shoots the guy while, uh, you know, he's getting ready for dinner. Right. He's calling his kids down for dinner. He hears a door ring. The guy's like, hey, remember me? He goes like, yeah, I do. Bam. Shoots him. He's down. (laughs) And then we don't see it, but we hear his wife be like, oh, no. And man. Yeah. So Walker and Trevette are on the scene and. They're investigating. 
Yeah, so this woman comes up and she's like, oh, I'm the new forensic psychologist on the scene. And Trevette's like, oh, you're replacing Dr. So-and-so. And she's like, yep. Was CSI out by this time? Like, was this a thing? <laughs> I don't know, but I think they literally were said, you replace so-and-so to give Clarence Gilliard a line. Maybe. But it's like, are, is this character going to then move over to the Sons of Thunder TV show? Like, is that what they're doing? I don't understand why they felt the need to introduce this person. And she's like, well, he shot them at close range and they were facing him. So it's personal. And then Walker's like, wow, sounds like it's personal. <laughs> and she's like, yes. Yes. My job here is done. I'm gone. And also I have the best hair of all time. It was pretty epic. Great, yeah. It was like something out of The Simpsons. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was so good. So Walker's like, oh, interesting. Trevette's like, oh, I'm going to go check out the crime scene again. And Walker's like, okay, I'll stand here. And then he looks over and sees Carlos standing outside of the police line. And he's like, I'm going to use my Walker intuition and my hunch and go ask him why the heck he's here. Because he looks pretty shaken up. And he's like, why are you here? And Carlos is like, well, I kind of knew the guy. And Walker's like, do you have any idea why, like, who'd be out after him? And Carlos is like, no, but it's a blatant lie. And we're like, oh, man, he must know something. Then we flash to the bad guy's lair where, again, this guy's been, he has these, like, professional headshots of these police officers. He got printed off somewhere. And he's been killing them and crossing them off with the most mega Sharpie in the world, a big fatty. And each time drawing an X through the pictures of the people he killed. And then it zooms over or pans over to the next person in line to be taken out. And it's Carlos Sandoval. Fade to red filter, Carlos. To, to be, be continued. Dun-dun-dun. Mm. Wow. Wow. Excellent. That about sums up this episode. And we'd uh, love to give a little shout out to our friend and collaborator, Adam Lauritsen, who's been drawing the excellent Walker Strations that are featured on our social media. Be sure to check out his other art on Instagram at at Imagination Run Amok. When we come back, it'll be time for us to each rate Sons of Thunder Part 1 on a scale of 0 to 10 boots to the face, resulting in our patented Roundhouse Roulette episode ranking, the complete results of which are available on our website, roundhouseroulette.com. Don't go away. Get this thing off the ground or I'll shoot you dead, old man. I've got the law on my heels. Don't shoot, sir. Whoa, up we go. Man, that ranger's done commandeered another hot air balloon. He's coming up after us. I hope he likes a little lead in his zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Wow. An honest-to-God Texas ranger. And what's he to you? He's gonna be dead in one minute. Well, you'd never believe it, but when I'm not flying this gas bag here, I co-host a Walker Texas Ranger podcast. Ah, who am I kidding? Sometimes I multitask. We here at Roundhouse Roulette have pledged to deliver the light of Walker Texas Ranger to the world. If you'd like to join us in that mission, please share the pod with a friend or leave us a kind review on Apple Podcasts. It truly helps other Walkerites find the cast. If you'd like to further support the show, be sure to check out our fine apparel and vintage action figures, of which I clean intensively at roundhouseroulette.com or join the fun on our patreon page most importantly though thank you for listening hey where'd he go i think i zoned out the moment you said podcast and what the devil is that human-like form sliding down the side of our balloon <laughs> mighty fine work ranger thank you citizen justice never sleeps and he just bought a one-way ticket to H-E double hockey sticks. Bless his heart. And yours too, fine listener. Let us get you back to the show. Well, welcome back. What did you guys think of this episode? This one is tough for me because I gave Blown Apart a nine. Okay. And I love Blown Apart, that episode. But the first 15 minutes of this episode, it didn't really matter what they did after that hot air balloon chase so it's probably one of the best things you're ever going to see on walker texas ranger it's a must-see episode i'm dropping the 10 oh yep and this is my first 10 we had this amazing opening we've got a maniacal bad guy 
we see Walker beat up Trent, who's already beat up people. So Walker's usurped a guy already. I mean, yeah, this is a is a great episode of Walker, Texas Ranger. And as I'm going first, I don't have to do a corrective score. I'm going to let you guys sort that out. I'm dropping my 10. You got me really thinking about this now. <laughs> you kind of have to, and I, I went first, so I don't have to. I'm going to take another sip of this beer. Like you said, after the first couple scenes and everything, yeah, I, I mean, I was already, like, I was just writing 10 on my notebook over right. and over again. Oh, yeah. But it did slow down a little bit. You know, that's the only, so I'm thinking, like, do I recommend it to a, a friend? Uh, yes, absolutely. But the ending kind of kind of fell apart a little bit. I don't know if there's going to be a better one. But maybe there isn't a 10 for me. You know, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm giving this one a strong nine. I, I think you guys are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as discussed, the cold open is by far the greatest one we've seen so far. That said, we've seen some pretty awesome ones that have had like Walker actually doing things in the episode after that. After this cold open, we see Walker do pretty much nothing. He spars with Trent once, and that's it. So what do you want him to do? He, the dude jumped out of a hot air balloon. He doesn't have to do anything else for, for the and, rest okay, of the episode. Th- think about the average viewer of this show that falls asleep during the first five minutes. Not in this first five minutes. I don't know, man. If they'd just watched Touched by an Angel, they'd be sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> in a deep sleep. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be going through REM at this point. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, that first scene... Excellent, yes. And there is a menacing bad guy, but again, Walker does like nothing in this episode. And we just watched an episode from the same season where Walker is doing roundhouse kicks, he's shaking down bars, he's doing all this stuff. Instead, he's just like uh, the dude with the sunglasses and CSI. Like, he's doing nothing. I don't know. That hot air balloon kind of lifts the episode a lot more than oh it, yeah i i that's certainly playing into my review of this episode but i think also playing into the review of the episode is the fact that it's a walker texas ranger episode that doesn't have walker texas ranger being walker texas ranger in it mm, what's more walker texas ranger than him jumping from one hot air balloon to another <laughs> sliding down the side and kicking the guy in the face all before the opening credits Okay, but if you say you were rushing home from work and you missed the first five minutes of this episode, there's nothing else in this episode. Nothing. There's a bunch of people who aren't Chuck Norris talking about drama that has nothing to do with Chuck Norris. Well, that's why they put the hot air balloon in there so that they could give us the bitter pill, uh, you know, pilot for the Sons of Thunder here. Exactly. And I am I am seeing through that ruse. And because of that... <laughs> I love it. I love it. And because of that, I have to give this one a 7. Adam, I think a 10 is... Whew. But here's the thing. The 10 is for Kenny Gibson. He deserves that 10. There might not be a better stunt, a crazier stunt done in the series than that. And that's what the 10's for. Now, Blown Apart was a way better episode... But they didn't have a stunt. Well, they blew up a whole neighborhood. But they didn't have yeah. a stunt. <laughs> they didn't have a stunt like this. That stunt was definitely a ten in my book. I just think your priorities are off. But okay, I, I, you're judging it off of, you know, thirty seconds of the episode. That's mm-hmm. all I need. Yeah. <laughs> in this case, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's a YouTube clip. Uh, so that gives this episode a roundhouse rating of 8.666 boots to the face. Ah! All right. Well, we hope you'll join us next time when we share our reactions to the second half of the Sons of Thunder made for TV movie. In the meantime, share your opinions with us on Facebook and on Instagram at, at Roundhouse Roulette and on Twitter at, at Roundhouse Pod. And rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your fine podcasts. Thanks for listening. And until next time. May the eyes eyes of the ranger ranger be upon upon you. When you're in Texas, look behind you. Oh, cause that's where the ranger's gonna be.